Over the past two years, I've made a lot of videos about my Linux journey, solving some problems and how I use it as my daily driver. But I of course cannot answer every single question, since some of them take time to investigate or they have already been answered quite a lot of times. So in today's video, I'm going over some of your most asked questions, talk about my personal stance and how you can solve some issues. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Sean Kent wants to know if I could show how to install NVIDIA drivers on Fedora. Now this one's actually interesting, because not that long ago it used to be pretty simple. Open the software center, search for NVIDIA or just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and there it was. For whatever reason they removed this way, but here's how you can do it now. If you have already enabled third-party repos during the installation phase of Fedora, then in your software center under software repositories you should be able to find an entry for the NVIDIA driver. If it's there, then good. Otherwise, we need to install the RPM Fusion repositories. Open a browser of your choice and head over to the official Fedora documentation for RPM Fusion. Now you want to open a terminal and paste these two commands without the dollar sign into it. You will be asked if you want to install the repositories, which we say yes to. Now we can update our repositories with sudo dnf update and install the NVIDIA driver with sudo dnf install acmod nvidia This might take a while and once it's finished we can reboot our system. Now you should be able to see your NVIDIA control panel as well as your graphics card in it. From a modding video, Fam wants to know if I can show how to run CS2 and for some reason also on Debian specifically. Alright, I'm not entirely sure where exactly you get stuck, but let's start at the beginning. Counter-Strike is a Steam game, so we of course first need to install Steam. Now for Debian specifically, Valve provides their own repository, which you can access by simply downloading the dev package from their website. Once the download is finished, you can double click it, install Steam and it automatically adds the repositories to your software manager. After that, you log into Steam, select CS2 and install it like you would normally. As it's a Linux native game, you don't even need to activate Steam Play. It just works. I'm finished and the my app friend, opens. I'm However, getting this I error. Video so it it just Doesn't work for Ubuntu. Okay, fine. Let's talk about DaVinci Resolve again. The thing is that even after years, there's still no reliable way how to install DaVinci Resolve and keep it that way. Part of the reason is that Blackmagic always choose quite old releases with many old dependencies like Fuse, which haven't been updated for quite a while. So just installing the ASK dependencies or finding them out via the command line is an option, but not perfect. So your best bet here is to follow very recent guides if you're on a certain operating system. My method with distrobox by making a Fedora container which is more compatible works better here, but it applies mostly for AMD only, since on Nvidia you need to install the same driver version as you have on your host. In some cases this can lead to problems, as Fedora might use a different driver than Ubuntu for example, and if the version is borked at the moment then it becomes a real nightmare. Now technically you can create a container with an NVIDIA flag that sort of passes your GPU to the container, but CUDA doesn't really work and Resolve notices that. For those of you who manage to install the same driver versions within the container and on the host, I also discovered that on some Debian based systems your user account needs to be in a group called render. So simply add it with sudo usermod ag render and your username and restart your PC afterwards. This applies to AMD, but also for NVIDIA. Alright, so let's quickly go through the process. Create a regular container with a Fedora 37 image, since this is the last version which doesn't need any dependency fixes, update it once after the installation and download the dependencies listed on my last video about it. Now for NVIDIA, like previously in the video, enable the RPM Fusion repositories and search for all of the available driver versions with this command. In a second terminal, you can find out your current driver version with the tool NVIDIA SMI. If you find a version that matches, then install it. If not, then you need to install a different one on your host. Afterwards, you need to run the .run file of Resolve, very importantly with sudo or you get a fuse error, and make your way through the installer. If your user is part of the render group, then Resolve should launch normally and you can export the path to it as an app. Oh, and sometimes you need to create an empty resolve directory in slash opt since the link wants it for some reason. This should hopefully clear up some questions. 
Workaholic was asking if professionals wouldn't just pay for crossover instead of the regular wine compatibility layer to run unsupported Windows apps on Linux. Well, while Crossover generally has better compatibility than Wine, true professionals would just stay on Windows. Like if you really need this program, then you don't want to make it dependent on a compatibility layer that also costs money. Plus this would also probably only work for individuals and not bigger companies, which have a much higher cost in licensing. So yeah, keep it short asks, why not just use Nobara? Well, even though I still play video games and use a couple of programs that Nobara would be optimized for, for me it isn't really worth it because I appreciate stability for my work. Like Fedora is already pretty up to date with its packages and Nobara patches a lot of stuff into it as well, which could theoretically lead to more problems and some dependencies starting to break official ones. Like I said, for me personally I feel like I don't really gain anything, but that's just a preference. Rafamir, which I just pronounced like a Witcher character, had the problem that the USB stick used for installing Linux was write protected and essentially rendered useless. This fortunately doesn't happen often, but if you discover a similar issue, then the first way to solve this is to download or open the tool you used for flashing it and reword the changes. The second way is to open up a disk utility that usually comes pre-installed on your system and format the whole stick. This usually fixes it. Jacob W wants to know if there is a way to try out Debian without installing it. And yes, there is. So usually most people that want to install Debian just go to their homepage and download the net installer, which doesn't come with a live environment like many other distros do. However, if you go to other downloads, then on the right side you see a section for Try Debian Live, where you can quickly download a fully fledged desktop environment ISO. Debian offers many different flavors, so just pick the desktop environment that you prefer. On my bottles video for Linux, Julian Neves asked if this does also work for Destiny 2 and the answer is unfortunately no. Many games and publishers either can't or don't want to enable Linux support at the moment, even if it technically could run it. There is a pretty nice website called Are We Anti-Cheat Yet, which features many anti-cheat protected games and their current status, so make sure to check it out. And yeah, those were some of the most common questions asked by you. Some of them of course phrased a bit differently, but this video should answer them nonetheless. I really hope that I could help you with some of them and if you have any more, then please let me know in the comment section below. If you are also interested in supporting this channel, then please make sure to check out our membership options for exclusive bonuses or our new online shop, whereas each sale helps to support open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.